I'm very passionate about self growth and talking to working moms to help them in their working mom journey. And it's just, it's, if you're passionate about it, you will find the time, right? It's, it's just a mindset. And so I do have days where I get up at 5am. I don't do it every day. (laughs) I, you know, some nights I just go to bed later, right? And you got to be flexible. But so I do, you know, I do get up at 5am. I do stay up late sometimes to work on the podcast because I'm so passionate about it. Hey friends, welcome to the More Than a Mother show. I am your host, LaJuan Moses, and I am a mom on a mission to help you master your mindset, own your time, and make money moves. Join me each week for tangible tips, tools, and strategies you can use in motherhood, business, and life, as well as inspiring interviews from moms just like you, which will help you own your identity outside of motherhood and find the freedom to do more of the things that you love and enjoy. At More Than a Mother, we are redefining the way you think, feel, and look at motherhood. If you are enjoying this show, feeling inspired and motivated, learning something new, or just absolutely love the show, please do me a favor and help me spread the word. Screenshot this episode and share your biggest takeaways in your Instagram stories. And don't forget to tag me at Lawan Moses and also tag at More Than A Mother Podcast so that I can share your share with my audience. Each time you share the show, it helps me to reach more and more moms just like you. So are you ready, mama? Let's go. Hey friends, welcome back to the More Than a Mother podcast. This is your host, LaJuan Moses, and I'm back with you again for another great episode. If this is your first time listening at More Than a Mother podcast, we are helping moms to create a life outside of motherhood without sacrificing their family time. We believe that moms can pursue their dreams and be great moms at the same time. Joining me today is Elizabeth Allen, also known as Liz from Bottomless Mamosa Podcast, which is a working motherhood podcast where you can learn, laugh, and grow in working motherhood through self-growth and each other. Liz is a firm believer that self-growth, self-care, and loving who you have become as a mom is the key to a happy, guilt-free, balanced motherhood experience. Liz and I talked about our different journeys that brought us to forming our businesses, forming our podcasts. We also shared our experiences with Liz having a young son and then myself having multiple children that are a little bit older. Liz shared with us her story that led her to founding Bottomless Mamosa. She talked about the journey of being a working mom who is also running a podcast and also the mom of a toddler who seems to be figuring out how to manage it all and get it all done. Liz gave some great tips, some practical tips that could really just help everyone listening, all our listeners, to step into their passion, pursue their purpose, pursue their dreams while being great mothers at the same time. Hey, Liz, welcome to the More Than a Mother podcast. I'm so excited to have you here today as my guest. I'm so excited to be here. I'm smiling like from ear to ear. That's wonderful. I'm glad that I can have you here. I'm glad that we've connected and I'm sure this is going to be a great interview and chat. But before we get started, can you please introduce yourself to my audience and just tell us a little bit about who you are? Yeah. So my name is Elizabeth Allen. I live in the suburbs of Chicago, Illinois, and I am the host of Bottomless Mimosa podcast. And I feel like that's how we connected, you know, podcasters supporting other podcasters. I am a full-time working mom. I have a just turned two-year-old son named Wesley. I've been married to my husband for four years. We're coming up on four years here in a little bit. And yeah, I have a full-time job. And then I do the podcast on the side. So my full-time job is medical sales. So that's like, I say my nine to five. (laughs) And then my side hustle is the Bottomless Mimosa podcast, which is a working mother podcast where you can learn, laugh, and grow in working motherhood. (laughs) That's awesome. I can't wait to talk more about Bottomless Mimosa and all that you have going on as a working mom and a podcaster and having a toddler. But before we get into all of that, 
At More Than a Mother, we believe that you can pursue your dreams and be a great mom at the same time. But with that being said, I also know that everyone has a story and none of us wake up being these great creatures that we are today. So if you could please share with my audience, what was your aha moment or what aha moments have you had along the way that kind of let you know that I want to be doing more or brought you to this point in life? Yeah, this is such a good question when I was reading it prior to getting on. And I really wanted to kind of be real and transparent in the fact of like, what was my aha moment? And I would say it was more recent than others because I know I had you on my podcast and you talked about how years ago you had yours. And I feel like mine was just like two years ago. Okay. (laughs) But Yeah, I I mean, minus motherhood, because motherhood in general is definitely an aha moment and changes your life. And obviously, you know that we, you know, it's a 180 of like a whole different perspective on life. But so I guess I would say I I did have a little bit of so I've been, I'm going to just kind of go back in my life a little bit. And, you know, obviously, we've all been through our kind of traumas that we've gone through our tribulations as children. And the first time I did therapy, I was in college. Okay. So I was very depressed, went to therapy in college, huge advocate of um, therapy, but I feel like that actually has to do with what I'm about to say and where my aha moment was. And basically recovered from the depression I had in college, obviously got a job out of college, met somebody, got married and you know, was still kind of feeling that those trials and tribulations from when I was a child. So it kind of came up when those pregnancy hormones came up, if that makes any sense. And I know that that, makes perfect sense. Yeah. Like new things come up from your past when you get pregnant and I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's the hormones. Society says it's the hormones, but really I think it's just a change of perspective in your mindset because you're prepping to become a mother So that's when I started this blog, Bottomless Mimosa. I wanted to, you know, kind of hear from other, you know, moms, what are they doing? How are they prepping? And so I would share stories on my blog of other working moms. And then I had my child and everything kind of just did like this 180. And I was like, oh my gosh, I have this beautiful human being I have to take care of. We were very blessed to have him because I was told that it would be a little bit harder for me to have children. So there was those emotions coming on. And then I still had this blog on the side and I was working and I was a new mom. So like I was trying to figure out life, you know, (laughs) I would just say like I was trying to figure out life and I stepped away from the blog and some working like some moms were like, disappointing. They're like, we love your blog. You're sharing your story. And I was like, look, I just need to take a break to figure out my life because I was feeling overwhelmed. The hormones were raging and I had three week maternity leave. So I was going back to work part-time after three weeks of having babies. So there's a lot going on there. Okay. And I feel like this is like very, sorry for the long story, but I feel like it's relevant. So my aha moment. And so nine months in, I was burned out. I mean, I was giving so much to everybody. I was giving, you know, as a wife, as a new mother and as a coworker, and I couldn't juggle all of it emotionally. And I just kept giving and giving and giving for like nine months. And I just finally hit like a rock bottom, I guess. And I had postpartum depression. I mean, it it put me in a really dark place in the sense that I was having like intrusive thoughts. I remember one time I was picking him up from daycare and I just like was crying and he was like in the back seat and my dad called. And this was, I think this was my aha moment. That's why I'm leading up to this. Right. And my, my dad calls and he's like, Liz, what's wrong? You're like bawling your eyes out. I'm like, I just want to drive into this person, stranger's you know, driveway. And I just want to drop him off and I want to leave forever. And yeah. And I was like, Oh my gosh, why am I saying that out loud? I said it out loud. Now I was like thinking about things Mm -hmm. from that, but that was like the first time I said it out loud to my dad. And he was like, 
calm down. It's okay. It's okay to feel this way. You just need to go home, go home and take a break. Tell Mike, you know, my husband to just give you a break. So I was like, okay, I'll do that. And that night, my husband sat down. He's like, you haven't been the same. You're not okay. And like, you need to get help. And so I actually went to the OBGYN because a society doesn't really tell you about postpartum depression. It's like, what is it? What are you thinking? Like, how are you feeling? Oh, well, you should have baby blues. And everyone's like, no, it's nine months after baby. Like, this isn't baby blues anymore, right. you know? So I was like, okay. Let me go get help. I went to my OBGYN. They took my blood because I'm like, maybe my hormones and my blood is like, you know, whatever they test for. Mm -hmm. <laughs> maybe that's off. You know, maybe it's that and it's not really in my mental state, right? <laughs> I'm laughing now because it's like, you want to think it's science, but really like mental illness or like anything is, is not black and white. Exactly. And I just, <laughs> it's just like, I thought it was, right? So they were like, everything's fine. Your thyroid is fine. Like you need to go see a psychologist. And that's when I actually did a ton of research on psychologists and psychotherapists. Okay. And, and so I, I've been seeing a psychotherapist twice a month since then, but I just started to see her. And three months after that, I started this self-growth journey of who am I as a mother who am I as an individual and, and what does that look like? Cause I didn't know what that looked like. And I felt like new motherhood, especially with the postpartum depression, it didn't allow me to see that because I was giving to so many people at so many different times, if that makes sense. Yes. So that was my aha moment. And then three months after that, I decided to start the blog again and talk to these moms online and start doing some more research on self-growth and self-love. And from that, six months after that, I was like, I need to be true to myself. I niched down to working motherhood instead of just a general motherhood blog. I actually stopped the blog that coming year. And I was like, this isn't true to me. I don't write. I don't read. Why am I making a blog? This makes no sense. Right. So then I kind of went through like a discovery and that's kind of how the Bottomless Mimosa podcast was born in the sense that it's new working motherhood. It's for new newer moms and older moms who kind of just felt lost like me, right? Like- right who needed the self-growth, who needed the self-love, but don't really know how to get there. And I've been on this journey for a year and a half now, fully recovered from my postpartum depression a long time ago. I still see a therapist because I feel like it does help to talk it out with somebody that's like a third party. And I am very, very grateful for her and that I can afford that because not a lot of people can afford therapy. But if you can, I'm a huge advocate. So... Yeah. And then that took off and it seems like a lot of working moms felt the same way. So, and then I yes. met you. So that yes. was my, so that was kind of my aha moment. Sorry for the long story. Oh, there's no need to apologize. I mean, there was so much that was in that story. And I think it touched on so many relevant issues that impact all moms and especially new working moms. And I like how you touched on the part about how you reached that burnout period. And you kind of had that moment where it's like, I just want to be done with this motherhood. I'm ready to drop them off. And it's like, deep down, you knew that's not how you felt, but you were just in such that emotional state at that time. And it really speaks to postpartum depression, because that is something that is not really talked about or clearly understood. And as you said, you hear the word baby blues, and people don't realize that those baby blues last so long, they can be, or from the beginning, their postpartum depression or the psychosis or whatever it could transgress to. But we don't realize because if we maybe don't experience as soon as we have our children, it may not be till months later that we could still be in that postpartum depression period, but we don't kind of connect those dots. And that's how I was when we spoke about my story. Mine was like almost a year or so later yeah. And or a year or two later, and that's when this when I went to see the psychiatrist, they're like, Well, you've most likely been battling with postpartum depression this whole time. You just never knew it. Let me tell you, during this crazy season we are in, there are some days I absolutely do not look forward to going grocery shopping. 
In this new normal, a trip to the grocery store can sometimes be a bit overwhelming. However, one day I discovered the greatness that is Instacart. The idea of creating my shopping list and someone else doing the shopping for me won me over quickly. Instacart matches you with personal shoppers in your area. They highlight deals to help you save money and your shopper finds everything you usually buy or makes suggestions for new or replacement items. And get this, your groceries can be delivered to you in as fast as an hour. If you haven't had the Instacart experience yet, if you haven't had the pleasure of shopping through Instacart yet, mamas, then you are truly missing out on an experience that can help relieve some stress and overwhelm from your daily life. No more worrying about getting all the kids together and dragging everyone to the store with you. Say goodbye to impulse purchases and your kids constantly asking, mom, can I get this? Follow the link in the show notes and that will let Instacart know that I sent you and it also helps support the show. Save yourself a trip to the store, save some time and save some energy. Shop through Instacart today. And we don't think, I don't think we make that connection. And we always think that people are going to feel that something's wrong with us as a parent, as a mother, if we admit these feelings that we have inside. You kind of feel like you failed. Like we're supposed to be like these super women, these super moms. And I, I don't know where we get that message. I'm sure it's like, you know, social media and society. And like, I don't know if we just put that pressure on ourselves, but it's, it's like if you don't, if you admit that there's a fault to you, it's like you failed, but you didn't. You're just burning yourself out. You're you're human, right? So, yeah, right. yeah. It's and, like we forget that we're human. Yeah, and I did a podcast episode with actually a therapist who specializes in postpartum depression, and she wrote a whole book about it. And she's like, I've had clients who've come to me five years after baby, like they're children are five years old. Now they're kids or young kids. And they're just, you know, they had postpartum depression and never did anything about it. Didn't know they had it. And now five years later, they're trying to help themselves, which I thought was crazy because that's five years. Like you're right. struggling with that. Right. And for no one, for you to not know that, because I mean, without the adequate research and the knowledge and someone telling you, you would just think that, okay, postpartum means like those couple months after I have a child, like postpartum, that's what postpartum depression is, not realizing that it's a state of being, it's a situation that you're in that is really not going to go away on, on its own. So it could really last for however long. Yeah. And I think with both of our stories, and the reason I wanted to tell you I was in counseling prior was that we both kind of had our, you know, you had different trials and tribulations prior to getting pregnant. And it's like, yes, you dealt with those and you did that. But then it came back when you became pregnant. I wasn't expecting that. I wasn't expecting that emotion to come back. And a lot of times, you know, specialists will say, if you had depression before or anxiety before or any kind of things going on prior to pregnancy, pregnancy will bring that out. And so that's kind of why I mentioned that because, I mean, it's just something to be aware of if you are thinking of getting pregnant, you know, that could happen. I'm not saying it happens to everybody. It just could, you know, and that was something I didn't realize going into it. Yeah, that is something that is good to point out because I don't think, I think people feel that once we deal with something, we go through therapy, we heal in whatever way that we heal that it's kind of done with, but things like pregnancy or even just there could be other triggers out there beyond pregnancy that can bring up past issues. I mean, I think that's important to note to everyone that is listening and anyone that has struggled with something that even if you've gone through therapy, you felt that you've dealt with something, been healed from it, had the treatment, that it's not impossible for it to pop up or you to feel some part of it again, whether you become pregnant or some other type of issue happens. Yeah, definitely. I mean, trauma is what it is. And as much as we do the work to heal from it, I feel like there's part of that memory that is always going to hold on to that kind of that moments that happen to you, but we just learn to push through those. Yes, exactly. I don't know. Pregnancy for me, it was like, 
oh my gosh, like I'm going to be taking care of another human being. It kind of like hits you, right? Yes, it does. (laughs) It's like, and then it brings, and then for me, it was like, wait, who am I? I don't even know who I am, kind of. I mean, I kind of do, but I kind of don't. And then, you know, who am I going to be as a mother too? Like I've never, I never asked myself that question. He just kind of came and I was like, what kind of mother am I going to be? It's kind of good to kind of assess that within yourself before you have the baby. And I didn't, I was just like, Oh, I'm just going to be a mom. Like whatever. I'll just figure it out. And it was, it was just very overwhelming. Right. And I don't think many people ask themselves that question of who am I going to be? Yeah. The mother. Cause I mean, there's really, as we know, there's no manual for motherhood. There's no way to get it right. And I mean, each child, I know that you have your child, but with me having multiple children, each child is different. So even if you feel like you mastered it, motherhood when you have one child, when you have another one, it's a whole new set of experiences. And then the more children you have, it's like, there are there how many ways that you can parent a child? <laughs> how many? Yeah, ways that's good to know. That's really good to know because I only have one. I was yes. always wondering like, wait, what happens when number two comes? Is it like the same? (laughs) It all all depends on, I will tell you, it all depends on your children's personality that each one is different and each one will require a different level of mothering and parenting. So they're really, once you think you figure it out with one, once you add another one to the mix, I mean, you're figuring it out all over again. Just Good to know. <laughs> yes, that is definitely, that will be my tip. You kind of know a little bit because you did it once, but yeah, it's like totally, right. everyone tells me with the second kid that their personalities are different, their sleep schedules are different, their eating yeah. habits are different, like everything's different. So it's it good is. to know. Well, the more you have, the more different it is. And you learn to adjust and navigate as you did with the first one. So, I mean, really like each time you could feel like being a new mom again, because you have a new baby with a new personality. So while you've mastered or got a handle on some skills of motherhood, there's going to be those things that come up that are individual to that next child that you have. So yes, you're learning. It's constantly learning. Well, I'm going to take that in this time because when you're pregnant the first time, I feel like people tell you all this stuff and you're like, okay, whatever. And then this time I'm like really absorbing that. So thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. And it definitely is just all part of the journey. Yeah. And so you mentioned when you had your child that you went through this period, I think that a lot of us go through to where we're giving everything to everyone and you got burnt out and you had to embark on your own self growth journey. So what were you feeling at that time that you were embarking on that journey and needing to take those steps? Like, how did you kind of start taking those first steps to make that transition from giving to everyone to starting to take care of yourself again? Yeah. I mean, it's a long journey. It's definitely a long journey. So I feel like for the listeners, it's like, it doesn't happen overnight. And I feel like this is an instance in society where we think everything happens instantaneously and it doesn't. I think self-growth, I just want to point that out, is a continuous thing. And if you're not growing, you're not, you know, evolving, right? So it started for me, I'm a spiritual person, but I, you know, I hate saying that because people get turned off right. when you say you're a spiritual person, but it's actually, there's actually a science to spirituality. And I started reading my whole self-growth journey started with the secret. I don't know if you've read the book, but it's all about the law of attraction. I'm sure you did (laughs) because yeah, we kind of talked about it. And so that kind of started with the whole law of attraction. And from there, I actually started developing self-care habits based off of the law of attraction, but like meditation, affirmations, gratitudes, all of those but they gradually happen in the year and a half. Like I didn't start off with all of them all at once. So I did start off with meditation. And the reason I did that was because I started really deep diving into the law of attraction and self-growth and self-love. And if you look up any famous person who's very successful, and and I'm just going to name a few like Oprah, Tony Robbins, Elon Musk, all of them, right? Those are famous names that people are going to know. They actually all do meditation. And then since we're both mompreneurs, if you deep dive into people who are successful entrepreneurs, the majority meditate. So I was like, this is a good start. 
if all of these people are doing it, and I was so against meditation, by the way, I was like, this is stupid. Like, why would I meditate? Why, whatever, I don't even know how. So I looked up like a YouTube, like beginner's guide for meditation. Like I was like, okay, whatever. I'm not gonna knock it until I try it. It was kind of like breastfeeding. Like I'm not gonna knock it until I try it. So I did, I started like one week. I just did three minute meditations each day. And that was kind of like the start of my journey. And I loved it. I was like, oh my gosh, like I can see where you need the stillness. You need to calm down your mind before starting your day or ending your day. Right. Mm -hmm. And then from there, it gradually became doing other self-love habits like gratitude. So then gratitude's really helped me in the sense that I started looking at like mundane tasks that I was doing as a mom that you do, you know, every single day, but I looked at them as grateful moments. So for example, it would be, I always give this example, it's the the bath time, right? So the bath time we have to do every single night. And I was like, always dreading it. I'm like, oh, I've got to, you know, bathe him again tonight. And I'm like, wait, it only takes 15 minutes. Like, why am I like dreading this? And so I was like, I'm going to look at it as this is bonding time with me and my son and we'll do something like playful in the bathtub every night and it'll be bonding time. And I'm just going to look at it as a grateful moment that I can bond with my son. And so little mundane things like that, I was like, okay, I'm grateful. Like even when I was doing the dishes, this is going to sound funny. It's like, I'm grateful I could do the dishes right now and my husband can watch my son so I can have this time to myself. Right. Stuff like that. And that really like trains your subconscious to just be grateful for what you have in the day and just kind of makes you more happier, right? Right. Because all these little mundane things that we do as a mom every day can get you. That is certainly true. And I mean, I like how you broke it down and let people know that it's not going to be an instant change and it doesn't happen overnight. And it truly is a journey and that you just have to start somewhere And for you, it started with the meditation and now with doing the gratitude, looking at Mm -hmm. the, I'm I'm one of those people too. I like to look at the good part of a situation because I always think that, Hey, it could always be so much worse. So why, while I'm out here complaining about something, somebody else would love to have these problems. So learning to find that piece of joy, that grateful moment, whatever you can pull from a mundane task or whatever the situation is, it really does help to rewrite that script in your brain and just get you thinking on a different path. And I think that so many people look for that instant change or they think they have to make such a major drastic change in order to start seeing things happen differently in their life. But through listening to what you said and then what I just said, it's showing that it's just those little piece by piece, those baby steps that really start to evoke that change over time. Exactly. I kind of look at it as like the analogy I use is like your baby. So you're a mom, you're a baby. He has to crawl before he walks, right? You can't just like be like, I love myself overnight. It's, it's a process. So right. yeah, definitely. Yes, definitely a process. So tell me more about Bottomless Mimosa. The podcast? Yeah. The podcast. Yeah. So my mantra is like, Bottomless Mimosa is a podcast for working moms to learn, laugh, and grow in self-growth and each other. And so what I do is I bring on experts like yourself or other podcasters or other working moms. And sometimes they're not moms, but maybe they're experts in their field. And I interview them on different topics. So obviously like your general working mom topics would be uh, mom guilt. A lot of, uh, a lot of it's balancing, you know, work-life balance. But now actually I, actually, I don't know when this is going to air. But now um, I'm doing that where I interview people on Sunday, we talk to the expert, and then on Wednesdays, I do a 15-minute commute episode because 15 minutes to daycare or school, that's all we have is working moms, right? right? And so I'm actually giving my insights of all these little habits that I do for self-growth, and it, I deep dive more into that. I deep dive into like core values and how to make your priorities based on your core values and how those priorities can change as, when you become a new working mom. And from those core values, you can also make your daily tasks 
And so you kind of feel more fulfilled on the day, day-to-day tasks that you're doing because you're actually doing those tasks based on your core values. So I'm, I'm going into 15 minute commute episodes to kind of deep dive into that more and kind of give my own insights because a lot of my listeners are wanting to hear from me on how I've grown in the last two years. That's, that's good. That is really Yeah. Good. I'm excited. I'm excited I met you too, because you were like the most positive person talking about gratitudes. Like you are, you just are like a radiant of sun of positivity. So oh, wow. thank you so much for that. I mean, yes, it's not always like I tell, try to tell people I am a very grateful person and I look for that piece of sunshine, but then I also let people know I'm not like that overly positive where you get to that toxic positivity where like everything is great. It's yeah. Like, like the fake positivity. Right. Like, no, we all have our bad exactly. days. I'm, I'm not going to stay here and say that I like, yeah, I do these habits and I'm sure you have your habits too, but like, do I do them on the weekends? No, we have a life, right? So exactly. Yeah. So that's what I always tell people because some people take that, don't know how to take that positivity. So it's like, yes, just because I'm a positive person, I look for the bright side of things. I am still realistic about life and I still share my struggles as much, but I always try to look at the bright side to a struggle. And like I said, I just keep in mind that hey, this is what I'm dealing with, but it could always be worse. So that kind of helps me with that positive mindset and being grateful. Do you want immediate access to new episodes, products, events, and even free tips, tools, and strategies delivered straight to you? Well, join the More Than a Mother community today. Head on over to lawanmoses.com and become a part of our community right now. That's www.lawa n-n-m-o-s-e-s dot com. I can't wait to see you inside my community. Yes, 100%. I love that about you. Well, thank you so much. So being a working mom, because I also work full time, that's another thing we have in common, and running a podcast (laughs) and all the things that we do, how are you finding that you are managing life? What is it like for you? (laughs) I love this question. I think I asked you this question too, but what are we doing? Oh my gosh, this is crazy, right? (laughs) I'm just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I'm going to step back and I'm going to answer the question, but I just, it makes, not makes me angry. I just want to talk to those women that say, I don't have enough time in the day because you do. It's a mindset, right? And if you are very passionate about what you do and you're passionate about your podcast and what you're doing and your messaging and talking to other working moms or other moms in general, being more than a mother, right? Yes. And I'm very passionate about self-growth and talking to working moms to help them in their working mom journey. And it's just, it's, if you're passionate about it, you will find the time. Right. It's, it's just a mindset. And so I do have days where I get up at 5.00 AM. I don't do it every day. (laughs) I, you know, some nights I just go to bed later. Right. And you gotta be flexible. But so I do, you know, I do get up at 5.00 AM. I do stay up late sometimes to work on the podcast because I'm so passionate about it. I do find lunchtime. Like right now I'm using you know, my lunchtime to do this podcast interview with me. Me too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. See, so I feel like if you want to do that and you're passionate about it, you'll get it done some way. I think another other thing that helps me is goals and setting a goal for the week of how many tasks that I need to get done for the podcast. Because I mean, our time is allocated to our nine to five job throughout the week. So really, when you have the downtime to work on your creative side, you really have to know what tasks do I need to get done, right? So that helps a lot. Also, I would say like our family has routines. We have a morning routine. Now it's not like on the clock, we have to be doing this, this, and this. It's more of like, okay, these are the tasks we have to do in the morning to get him out to daycare. I'm very communicative with my husband. So I'm very appreciative of him of where we are like, okay, if he has a meeting in the afternoon, I'm picking up my child from daycare. And then if he's got, then he's going to take him in the morning kind of thing. So we've really communicated in our schedules and making sure that we're on the same page and that we're helping each other out. Also self-care, making sure that I have time for myself and filling my cup 
honestly, the podcast fills my cup up. But I do ask my husband sometimes like, hey, you went golfing one Saturday. So now I need my Saturday three hours. And I typically work on the podcast at that time just because I love it. Right. So I think if you are saying I don't have enough time, it's just maybe you haven't found what you're really passionate about, if that makes sense. It does. Yeah. And you agree with me. I mean, you find the time as well. Yes, I definitely agree with that. And I'm one that also says you find time for what you want to find time for. And I like percent. Yes. And I like to always tell my mom friends that I talk to when it's always, I don't have time. So busy. It's like one busy can be an excuse. That's one thing I like to tell people that busy can be a cover up. It can be an excuse. And what exactly are you busy with? And it's if you take some of that same passion that you're throwing into other people and that energy that you're putting into other people and kind of reclaim that and take it back for yourself, then you can find the time and start to get and connect with things that you're passionate about because there's no sense in you giving everything and supporting everyone and being passionate for everyone else. But then at the end of the day, you're miserable and unfulfilled and just feeling completely drained. A hundred percent. And it's funny because I can get into this topic like for an hour because that's kind of where that whole core values conversation I was going with. Like if you know your core values, okay. So for example, my close family I'm creating is a core value of mine, like me, my husband and my son. Do you know how many play dates I've said no to or family gatherings I've said no to because I just maybe wasn't up for it or I just didn't feel like we were doing something else as a family or like people don't realize you don't have to say yes to everything. You can say no. People don't realize when it comes to like toxic relationships, maybe you should get rid of those if they're causing too much drama or energy in your life, right? So, I mean, I could get really into this, but ultimately, yeah, I I feel like as a mother, you need to really determine what are your what are your core values and then make your priorities and your tasks based on those. And really it frees up so much time, right? Like you were saying, if you're giving, giving, giving to everybody else, I don't know. It it just you're not it's gonna look like you don't have enough time in the day. It is. And you won't ever have enough time if you're not taking that time and being intentional about it. And I just like how you said about knowing your core values because when you know your core values and what matters to you, then you'll make sure and be intentional with setting things around that. So it really goes back to that whole, as we started the conversation with the self growth and the transformation and learning yourself. So then once you know your core values and you figure have those all in line, it's like, you're going to make sure that the things in your life really match up to those so that you're feeling fulfilled as a, as a woman first, and then as a mother, wife, and whatever other roles that you have. Yes. And I think it's a good point to point out, and I think you would agree with me on this, is that when you become, when you're doing the self-growth journey and you're starting to love yourself more, it might piss some people off. <laughs> you know oh, what definitely. I mean? It definitely will. Yeah. So just look back on it. It's like, okay, the people that stay in your life are the people in, that actually love you, you know? So that was that was a huge realization for me as well in the last two years for the self growth journey and and who I am as a mom. Yes. I mean, because people always expect you to be available. And the one thing I say, which I do like with how you're starting out, like this is already a part of your life. So your husband, your child, everything, you're adjusting to it together. Whereas mine was kind of on the flip side to where I had given everything to my husband and have three kids. So I had given everything to them for like the first few years I think my youngest child was probably like three or four when I finally had another aha moment of hitting my burnout and like, okay, there has to be more to life than this. And it's harder when your kids are older or you've been with your spouse for so long and they're used to mom being a certain way. So that even they're not upset, they're not angry, but it's that adjustment like, wait a minute, you've always been here. How are you not here now? (laughs) That's true. That's a really good point. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. So that's the good part about like with you starting young, it's going to be a part of part of your child's young, part of your lifestyle. Whereas mine, I was so all the way in had my son was in sports, my girls were in dance. I was just taking care of everything involved in so many activities. And one day I'm like, wait, there's, there's more to life than this. So when I started pulling back and kind of, okay, I'm making myself a priority, 
everyone has to start to adjust. And it's like, wait a minute, you you were always there. What do you mean? Wait, I have to do this for myself. Wait, I have to figure this out for myself. Wait, you're not just going to do it for me. No, we're going to do this together. So there's that adjustment level. That's such family. a good point. It is. And there are a lot of women and mothers where that mom guilt can come in that may pre- prevent them from making these changes and going on that self-growth journey if they do have older kids and their families used and acclimated to a certain lifestyle, that it will kind of deter them and that mom guilt will kick in. And then they just won't even go after their dreams because they've been in this role for so long that they're feeling even worse because now it's like feeling that failure again because I'm taking back time for myself and then I feel like I'm failing my family. So, yeah, I can definitely see that. I can, that's a very, very good point because we are more than a mother, right? Yes. <laughs> we are. And now you're making me feel good that I'm doing it with him at such a young age. But yeah, I mean, that's such a good point because I would never have thought, yeah, all the, all the extracurriculars that happen when you're, when you have older kids. Yes. Schedules are crazy, I'm sure. Yeah, schedules are crazy. And it was just everything was all about them for so long. And then it was like, wait, I'm still a person. Too. I'm a person. I'm more than a mother, which is where this all came from. Yes. I'm a person too. And I have every right to do things that I like and enjoy. And I'm passionate and throwing everything into them. So I can definitely find the time to throw into the things that I love. So that definitely was an adjustment period. But I mean, everyone is acclimated to it now. So I think it's good having us both on here and showing those different sides where you have incorporated it and you learn through your different experiences in the beginning and it's your lifestyle to where I was on the other end where I had yeah. my family to a certain lifestyle that I'm pulling it all back. But we're both showing that it can work either way you do it. You just have to be intentional and really make yourself a priority. And guess what? In the end, your kids are okay. Your family's okay. Everyone adjusts and you're not taking anything away from your family by doing things that you enjoy and doing things you love. Not at all. And guess what? The guilt goes away. When yes. you have that like self-confidence in yourself, the, the mom guilt goes away. And I have a whole podcast episode about how I think mom guilt's BS because it's like, first, I think it's a society thing that they've made us feel guilty for, but also it's a transition into, for working moms, it was like the transition of, mom guilt is like now we're there are two working parents in the household some most of the time and so I think we're kind of transitioning from that old school to new school so I think that's where guilt comes from but ultimately like if you're confident in what you do and who you are as an individual you won't feel guilty for the daycare I don't feel guilty for daycare like sending him out to daycare I know he's having fun I know it's good for him he's socializing and I get to be the person that I want to be right so yeah, I think that's a good point with the mom guilt as well. Right. And you trust yourself, you know yourself, you're confident in and yourself. And you do too. Yeah. Right? And you know that you're not going to make any choice that's going to hurt your child or anything like that. You're making that best decision for yourself and for him. And you know that you're putting him in the hands of people that you can trust who are going to take great care of him while you go and do the things that you need to do. So yes. yeah. And your kids are still going to be doing everything that they're doing. Now they're just actually you're giving them a sense of independency and growth for themselves. So it's, it's all good and healthy things, you know? So. Yes, definitely. And I have that same theory with you where I think that I, mom guilt is a lie. So when everybody when <laughs> asks about mom guilt, I'm like, it's a lie. And I mean, it is <laughs> actually when I tell, especially doing interviews are like, what do you think of mom guilt? I'm like, mom guilt is a lie. And like, the people interview, they'll bust out laughing. Like, it's the unpopular opinion. It <laughs> is. It's yes. that unpopular opinion. Because I mean, like you said, it's messages we're telling ourselves, things that we're being fed. But when we start to flip that mindset and know ourselves and believe what we know to be true and what we live, then we can say that mom guilt's a lie. It's BS. And I'm not going to believe that because I know what the truth is. Yes. Exactly. Amen. Yeah, so we could talk about this all <laughs> I know. Day. I could talk about this all day. <laughs> we could, definitely. But what ha- would you say has been the most rewarding part of your journey so far, your life journey? So I actually, this is a good question too. And I don't know if this is a good answer, but um, 
looking inward to be better outward has been the best part of my journey so far. I mean, I'm so grateful for doing this journey. I'm so grateful for my son and he kind of opened up the floodgates, right? And me right. becoming a mother opened up the floodgates of understanding who I was as a mom, as a wife, and as an individual. And I keep repeating that, but I think it's not just one pinpoint thing that I can tell you. It's like two years of just being on this journey, if that makes sense. I know that's kind yeah. of corny, but... No, it's definitely... <laughs> I, I always call life a journey, so I can agree because it's never, to me, just those one things or things you can point out. It is a life journey, which is why the question is about your life journey. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like so excited and I feel like you're this way too. Like, what is life going to bring? And it yeah. makes you excited for like what is to come as well. Even during this time, I know this time is kind of crazy, but... I'm still excited. Like, what does the future hold and what chapters are we going to go through as a family and seasons and all that? So, yes, it's definitely a good outlook to have. And I do like, I like what you said was your most rewarding part. There are no such things as bad answers. So yes. (laughs) Okay, good. (laughs) And before we walk away, what would be a tip? Because you know that we have moms that listen that struggle with the mom guilt or they're struggling to find their way or kind of manage life. So What's a tip or some final tips that you could offer to a mom listening who may be struggling with any of those things? Yeah, I would say a couple tips. One, ask for help, right? I talked about therapy. I'm a huge advocate of therapy if you can afford it. If you can't, there's friends and family that you can talk to. And if you don't want to talk to friends and family, talk to you or talk to me, right? We're doing this podcast for a reason. We want to talk to people and we want to make sure, you know, not make sure, but tell our story, but also you can learn from our experiences, especially you. I mean, you've been, have a lot of challenges in your life, right? That people can relate to. So I would say that. So ask for help. And if you don't want to ask for help, I mean, there's so much stuff on the internet you can deep dive into. So like, for example, if you resonated with the meditation I said today, Again, it's like taking baby steps, going and finding those resources and just starting somewhere, but starting small and then kind of gradually, you know, getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Because once you start small, trust me, you'll over the months, it'll just start coming. Like things will start being attracted into your life. Like, oh, I should read this book. I mean, I've read so many books in the last two years, right? I, I let me read this book. Let me listen to this podcast. I mean, what's this YouTube video, you know? So I think starting small would be the biggest advice I would have. Great advice. Yeah. And I don't know, listen to the people around you. I didn't know I had postpartum depression until my husband and my friends were like, there's something off, you know? So there's the people that love you will tell you. So just listen, I guess those would be my advice. That's good. Ask for help, start small, and most importantly, listen. I think that's a great way to wrap up this conversation. Yeah. So thank you for joining me, Liz. Can you tell my audience where we can connect with you online? Yeah. So you can find me on Instagram at bottomless two underscores mamosa. That's M-O-M-O-S-A. Spell it out because everyone says mimosa. It's not mom. Mamosa. And then you can find my Bottomless Mimosa podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google Podcasts. Same spelling. (laughs) And yeah, that's where you can find me. DM me, reach out. Thanks so much for this interview. I appreciate it. And thank you so much for joining me. This was great. Want to connect with me before the next episode drops? Do you want a preview of all the great things that are coming to the More Than a Mother podcast? Then join me over on Instagram and Facebook at More Than a Mother Podcast. I can't wait to connect with you. Thanks so much for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, head over to LawanMoses.com. I love for us to stay in touch. Make sure you leave your email address so I can send you inspiration, tips, and the latest updates. Or if you prefer, Text the word MORE, that's M-O-R-E, to 302-440-4632. 
We have some great things coming up and I don't want you to miss a thing. Thanks again. Make sure you subscribe and leave a review. Until next time, keep pressing because victory is yours.